This episode is brought to you by Wing Stacking. Hello, fellow Novians. Today we are going to go over building an actual ship and uh, throw in some tips and tricks on building um, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long, and I'd rather not split it into two parts. So I'm just going to try to truck along here without stopping too much. But the first thing that you're going to do with anything is place the dynamic core. As I said in my other videos, dynamic cores are for moving constructs, and then you have space and um, static cores, and those don't move. One is for space, one is for ground, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and select it, click equip, and oh, fuck, right. So the game has this weird thing with the permission system. Um, that even if you give somebody permission on a corporate tile, it won't let you place this unless you give somebody like all of the permissions. So that's fine if you're just playing with your friends, but a lot of corps uh, or organizations don't just want to give everybody off the street um, permissions for that. So what we did is we made a little circle here and we filled it full of dirt because apparently if you place the core on top of dirt, it's blue. If you place it on the tarmac, it goes red. So I'm just going to drop this here we're going to call this garbage scow. Bloop. Hit deploy. And it's deployed. And then what I can do is I can use my uh, maneuver tool, default number seven, to grab that core, swing it around here. And uh, I can use the mouse wheel to maneuver it back over there into the light so we can get started building. And uh, once I put some parts down, it's e it's easier to just move it around the construct. But let's just put that there and try to get it as level as possible. There we go. Okay, so the first thing you do is put down a court. The most important thing is this arrow. This arrow needs to be on top and pointed in the direction that you're building. So the arrow points towards the front. Um, and the arrow is on top. So if you were to turn this cube upside down and the arrow was down here, it's still pointing forward, but as soon as you get in your ship, it's gonna flip gravity and put you on the roof, um, which might be kind of cool if you're doing some weird kind of like, all my stuff is on the ceiling ship, uh, but otherwise you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the arrow is forward and on top. All right, so we're gonna hit B to go into build mode and the first thing I'm going to place is my cargo box. So let's go into inventory here. And when you have a lot of things, you can use this search bar here and just type container, container. Yep, and there's my medium container. I'll equip that. And I'll just drop it on top of the core here for now. Boop. And there we go. So we want to make sure this is centered on the grid. Um, so as you can see, there's this blue line right here that you see. The blue line is not the center of the grid. The blue line is your center of gravity. Um, so as you build stuff, this line is going to change. So don't use this as a center line because it's going to move around. What you want to do is use the, the thin lines. So you can see like this line here, this blue line here is kind of brighter than the others. So that's your actual center line. Uh, in terms of build mode, in terms of like building something uh, synergistic or whatnot. Um, and that's going to change. Your center of gravity line is going to change as you uh, fill or fill cargo or something else. So what you don't want to do is like build all of your cargo containers on the left side of the ship and then you have no weight on the right side. That line is going to move way over there and your ship is going to fly sideways kind of or, or counter. Uh, it's just going to be really hard to maneuver. Um, there are ways around that and uh, basically using a container hub and I'll go into that uh, a little bit later but for now we've got our cargo container down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the core with my 9 tool which is my 
move element tool and grab it. And I'm just going to stick it on top here for now. Boop. So it's out of the way and not underneath my uh, cargo box. And we're not going to be using any, any uh, voxels for this uh, or honeycomb. Um, just because this is going to be just a raw, it flies, you can get to point A to point B uh, with a medium cargo container. And then later, if you want to go into um, details and put uh, honeycomb together and then move your elements around and all that stuff, that's good too. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to grab everything that we need. Um, so I'm going to hit one. So on the right there, you can see the quick access menu over here. Um, what I want to do is I want to grab most of my parts and stick them over there. So I'm going to grab this. Let's clear that out. Um, yeah, if you if you're ever in here, blah, 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 I'm going to type a bunch of crap, right? If you're ever in here and you're like, where's all my storage? Um, yeah, sometimes whatever you type in here stays. So if I leave the inventory and I open it back again, it's still there. So you just click the X, get rid of it and all your stuff pops back up. So what we're going to need is we're going to need um, some small stabilizers. Uh, we're going to use some small wings. There they are. You just drag them over here. Boop. Uh, and you have all these slots on your board when you're building. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down and uh, access them. Um, we're going to use these large vertical boosters and large uh, adjusters. Um, we're going to need a command seat. There we go. You can also use a hovercraft seat, uh, but I wouldn't use a cockpit because um, it limits what you can do with uh, Lua coding um, as there's, there's only certain things. Oh, before I do this, this white line under data bank, that means that it has dynamic properties. So when I took my ship apart, this data bank was being used to store the code for DU orbital. So before you can place it again, and you want to just wipe it, basically, you right click, remove the dynamic properties, and that white line goes away. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, remove dynamic properties, that white line goes away. Um, so let's drag that over here, got a command seat. Um, we need brakes. So large brakes, brake, brake, there we go. Large brake. I'll drop that here. Um, a medium container. Uh, two atmospheric engines. Medium containers. No, we already did that. Uh, medium fuel tank. And engines. And this will save time so I don't have to keep opening the uh, window there to pull uh, my materials. So we should have everything we need to build uh, a ship. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, put my brakes down. I'm going to use them as like floors. So the only thing in the game right now that doesn't have placement um, restrictions are brakes. So you can see it has these arrows. Um, eventually they'll enable that and everybody's going to have to redesign everything because most people hide their brakes. Uh, like the horizon there, uh, has a break room and by break room, I don't mean where people go to drink coffee and congregate. I mean a literal room full of brakes that are all just stacked up on top of each other. So if they, if the game devs ever, uh, activate the uh, need for brakes to be directional, then there's going to be a lot of people rebuilding stuff. But for now, it doesn't really matter which direction they point. They can point straight down. They can point sideways. They can point into uh, oblivion. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to stick this under here. And you can see mouse movement is kind of eh when it comes to like placing things. Uh, so we're going to use the arrow to keys. As soon as you type an arrow direction with the arrow keys, you no longer have mouse control. So now you can fly around it. You can use the arrow keys to fine tune. 
Um, it does get a little wonky depending on which direction you're looking at uh, when you start using the arrow keys. So, like, right now I was looking forward, so my left and right actually make it go left and right. Uh, if I go over here, now my left and right make it go forward and backwards. Um, if I start looking at it from the top here, or uh, from the back, it's going to do different things. So, yeah, now let's make it go in and out if I look at it from here. So, I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it, like, right about here. I'm going to place that by hitting enter. And uh, another nice little thing, uh, once you use your arrow keys to move something and you hit enter, it'll place the next uh, material, as long as you have the next material, right on top of the other one. So, if I use my arrow keys now, you can see I can move this right next to it, which is very handy. So you don't have to like get your placement all, all wonky. Now you say, that's a lot of arrow keys. Ah, oh, I gotta press arrow keys forever. Well, another little trick, right, is to hold control and press the arrow keys. So right now I'm holding control, boop, that moves it uh, a whole um, section, I would say. So if you look at this grid right here, right, one, two, three, four. Those are each um, one voxel width wide. Um, if you look at this square here, this light blue square, which is four by four voxels wide, um, that is a block of voxels, right? Four by four block of voxels. So what happens when you hold control is it moves it by that block, so four, 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 right? And it's right next to each other. And then if you need to move it, you can just let go of control and move it uh, normally. Um, and page up, page down is how you is also going to be uh, used in the movement of up and down, and sometimes forward and backwards. To, like I said, depending on the direction that you're looking at. So we're going to drop that. We're going to go over here. Hit enter again. And now we have like this pad here. Um, and then I'm going to go backwards to here, drop it again, and use the arrow keys again. I'm holding control, get over here, drop it again. So I'm just going to basically make a square around uh, the ship um, here. And then I'm going to go backwards, All right? Drop it. And we'll go over here and drop it like it's hot. That doesn't look right. So now that I've placed this, actually, let me just place this one real quick. Um, oh, it actually is right. It's this one's not lined up. No, it's lined up. But let's say that it wasn't lined up, right? So in that case, you'd use your nine tool, which again is your move element tool. Um, you can click it and drag it around, but watch what happens when I click it. It drops on the ground, right? So now it's back on my mouse control and there's no hope whatsoever of me getting this lined up again upside down. Uh, no, it just won't do it, right? So hit escape, that puts it back where it was. What you can do is just point at it with your mouse and then use the arrow keys. And same thing, hit enter when you're done uh, to place it. So that's a lot, lot easier. Um, so if I wanted to move all these backwards, then I'd look at it, hit back one, look at it, back one, etc., etc. right? So you can kind of move very fast uh, into doing that stuff. All right, so we have our brakes, we have a cargo container, we're gonna drop our engines down. So depending on the weight of your ship, you may need more engines, you may need less engines. Um, we're gonna use these large military uh, atmospheric engines. And yeah, I'm just gonna place it right here, right? So that's gonna go there. And again, I'm using the arrow keys to move it. Element's not in my container. Oh no. Oh, these are medium engines. That's why I'm like, these look small. <laughs> How did I put medium engines on there? Large military atmospherics. Okay. I'm like, it's stupid me. I'm like, oh, these look, why do these look so small? Okay. So this is a little bit better, right? 
is a little better size. So we're going to go to the edge of the break box here. Um, we're going to place that. And then we're going to move this one over here. And we're going to place that. Alternatively, um, a cool thing you can do, I'm just going to remove that real quick, is if you look at the element that you're about to place, um, it's going to do this crap where it's overlaying. But if you just point your cursor at it and you hit U, you see it turns yellow. It turns yellow, right? So now it's yellow. If I place this down, hopefully this will work. And I move it around here. And I have it even with that. Come on. This has been buggy lately, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. Nope. It's yellow. They're both the same angle. Okay, this hasn't been working for me lately, so I wonder if they broke it when they tried it. But what should happen is this engine, when it's equal with this engine, should turn yellow, uh, saying that these are both the same distance apart um, or in the same location on each side of the uh, middle axis. Um, but it's not working, and I used my visuals kind of to line, I used the edge of this brake pad to line it up anyway, so I know they're equal, right? Wait, is that one? That one has a gap. This one doesn't. So, what's going on here? Are you being wonky? Okay, I'm just going to pick this up. Um, and the way to do that is use your deployment element tool, hold Alt, click, and it picks it up. So, I'm going to place this again on top of here. Um, you can hit R to rotate your element while trying to place it. You can also hold R and use the mouse wheel to spin um, on the axis that you're placing it on. So what is going on here? Come on. We're just going to place this. I don't know why there's a gap there and on this one it's flush. Very strange. Let's try that U thing again. Yep, okay. So now it's working. Uh, it must have been like a centimeter off or something like that. But now you can see if I move this, it's blue, it's yellow. That means it's it's even with the other engine. So you can just move your mouse keys around until it turns yellow. Hit enter. You're good to go. All right. So we've got engines. You can see these are flashing. That basically means that there is no fuel tank that's linked to it. So the next thing we're going to do is put down a fuel tank. You can do that last. They can blink for however long they want. So we're just going to put the fuel tank here in between the engines. Um, no, actually, we're going to put it on top here, just like right here, right? So then you'd use number six, your linking tool, link elements tool. Click on the fuel tank, click on the engine. Click on the fuel tank, click on the engine. You can see this yellow line appeared. That means they're linked and also they stop blinking. So now they're pulling fuel from this container. Um, you can only link so many uh, engines to a specific container. So each size has their own like linking requirements. I think you can only link like six engines to one of the mediums, um, but don't quote me on that. All right, so we got our engines. What else do we need? All right, we need our uh, not vertical stabilizers. We're actually not going to use vertical stabilizers. We're going to use large flat hover engines. Um, just because vertical stabilizers, you'll use um, space fuel, and large flat hover engines use uh, this type of fuel, the atmospheric fuel, right? So I want to get underneath it and you can see I can't really walk under here. So what I'm going to do is get out of build mode, use my seven tool, my maneuver tool. And I'm just going to lift it up so I can get underneath here. It will just stay in the air uh, and we'll go back into build mode. All right, now we can place these. So the important thing when placing these hover engines is not to block uh, the bottom of them. 
So you see where the arrows are that come out. Uh, if you block that area, the unit will turn red. I'll show you in a second, but uh, we don't want to block this area, right? So I'm going to drop this here. Oh, I should have used my arrow keys. Okay. Um, just make sure they're kind of, yep, that's on center. Go over again here. Line it up. So it's centered. Yep. And then we'll put three back here. One. And what these do is they'll just catch the ship as it's coming down um, so that it doesn't slam into the ground. Now, if you have too much weight on your ship or you're coming down too fast, they will not save you. You'll crash into the deck. Uh, but they uh, will do a nice job um, if you're within your weight limit. Um, so we're going to use the linking tool again. Link them all to the fuel tank. All right. Okay, so yeah, this will do a lot more than six. So you shouldn't have quoted me on that. So six, seven, eight, we have eight links now, right? On one of fuel tank. So we're good on that. Um, let me put down a seat. We're just going to stick it right here on the front. On this monstrosity. Come on. Come on. Go to the seat. All right, so I'm holding R to rotate as I move it around. Once I get it there, let me use there. Yep, okay. So it's got to go right there. Uh, and for this, I'm going to be using the um, DU Orbital HUD. So I need a data core. Data bank. Equip. And we're just going to throw that right back here next to the chair. And we want a radar. Do I have any radars in here? Nope, so we're not getting a radar. All right. If you did have a radar, you would need to link the radar to the chair. So I'm going to link the chair to the data bank. And the chair will automatically link to the core uh, once you get in it. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. So what else do we need? We need adjusters and we need wings. So a little trick on the wings is I'm just going to stack them in the back here. Where are my small wings? There we go. All right. So I'm going to kind of try to get these lined up. Then I'm just going to use the arrow keys. Okay. Yeah. So now because of the direction, I'm, oh my God, it didn't go straight. Sad day, sad day. Let's try this again. Use the R key to rotate a little here so we can get it straight. I just want you to be straight. Nope, you see it's still catty cornered there. Why are you doing that? Why are you being mean? Stop being mean to me. All right, this is what I was talking about, that the building tools can be annoying sometimes. So I'm just going to use this container to make sure it's flat, and then I'm going to move it using the arrow keys. Oh, now page up and page down is left and right. So you're constantly trying to figure out, like, which direction stuff's going to go when you push arrow keys, um, but you'll eventually get a hold of it. So we're going to put this... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spin these engines. Eight, so I have a flat surface to work on. So again, I used my nine tool to grab the engines and then rotate them. Go back down. All right, right there. So that one's placed. Let's rotate this one. Let's get it in the right rotation. Use the arrow keys. Eh. There it is. Okay. Now we have a flat surface that I can use, which is, there we go. 
So I'm going to move it with the arrow keys so that I can get in here. So we're now one, two, three, four, five, six. No, I was using small wings, but why do I only have six of them in my inventory? Well, this is why I build here at Chimera headquarters. Um, the Chimera store. So we ran out of wings. All I'm going to do is go upstairs, find where the wings are. Where are the wings? There they are. The wings. Swall wings. And I'm just going to buy another six. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, good to go. So that was easy and simple. I just grabbed some stuff I was missing. And now I'm going to go back outside and build up the ship. Uh, this is one of the perks of joining Chimera. You get access to the store. You also get access to free honeycomb as long as you put your ore in. And the way you join is hit that F3 key, go to the search bar here, type in Chimera, hit search. Oh, I put it in keywords. Type in Chimera, hit search, there we go. Click on the name, send application. Good to go, right? You can join us, we have a Discord, um, we do events. It's a pretty chill place to hang out. All right, so back to placing the wings. And you don't have to absolutely build this exact same way. Um, as long as you use the same parts in kind of the same orientation, uh, you're good to go. So. This is just a general guide on what you need. And as you can see, I'm putting these wings in between the other wings. They kind of stack real nice, right? Because they have this little like upslope. So you can get the same amount of wings um, in a single space. Now you might be saying, how does this work? Well, the game is not like super accurate when it comes to atmospheric flight it requires certain elements it does computations based on those elements um, but then it doesn't check the fronts of most of the elements to make sure they're not blocked so although there's no although this is completely blocked on the front edge of the wing that's not where the the uh, code is looking the code is looking on the back side of this wing so like if I open the wing here, you see the arrows, El arrows, right? That is the direction that you cannot block. That big circle with the arrows. Don't block that side or your wings will go red and they won't work. All right, so I'm gonna grab two medium wings now and I'm just gonna, oh, that goes off the build box. So let's look at stabilizers. Uh, we're gonna use these small stabilizers uh, because in terms of stabilizers, they are like twice the size of, well, these are small wings, but there's no, uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is small, small compared to small. Um, kind of similar, right? But they take up more space, uh, more width, and the mediums are huge, and the larges look like something off of like a flying albatross. So we're going to get these kind of lined up. Let me use the top of this box to get it flat, right? All right. Go back here. Kind of page down on top of here. All right, so we're doing these vertically so that we can get uh, help when we turn. Otherwise, um, we're relying specifically on our adjusters. And that's the next thing we need to place. So let me talk about adjusters. 
Adjusters literally adjust your ship. Um, you can see it's also got the arrows on the top. That's the direction. You cannot block it. If I put this here, give it a second. Come on. Come on. Are you going to lie to me? Are you are you going to make me look bad in front of all these people? Are you going to lie to me? Hmm, apparently it's going to lie to me. Um, so your adjusters are what up oh, there it goes. See how it turned red? That means it's obstructed, so it's not going to work. So adjusters are basically what adjust your ship in flight. In space, you would probably call them more akin to like micro jets or uh, attitude adjusters or uh, uh, a, what's the word? I don't, I can't remember, but they're basically like micro thrusters in space. They help uh, orient your ship to different directions. Um, the same thing that they do on the ground, except they have to deal with gravity. So uh, they also don't take any fuel, but they have to be placed in specific locations in order to help you. So we're going to go up to our build helper here. You see how this is red because we're not a spacecraft. Yep. And you see how this is uh, orange. Well, if you hover over it, it says insufficient pitch up torque, insufficient roll right torque, insufficient yaw left torque. So the adjusters are providing that torque. So we need to make sure that we have left, right, uh, yaw, left, right, roll and up, down pitch. Now your wings help with up, down pitch. So we don't have to worry too much about that because we have the wings. You also look at your inertia matrix. Um, and we'll take a look at that again as I start placing these, um, and I'll make a comment. Uh, but this is what you would look at if you're placing your adjusters, right? So I'm going to tab back out. Uh, we're going to hit enter here. You can see some numbers just changed. So now we have, it's, it's not blocked. It's just red because it was red for a second ago. Um, so now we have our left or yeah, right rear adjuster. So if I try to turn that way, let's say I try to turn right, I try to spin my ship to the right. Um, this is gonna provide thrust, which is gonna push my back this way. However, in order for the nose to come this way, I also need thrust on the front left. So rear right and front left. And I'm just gonna stand this up because it don't have to be pretty. And now I have a ship that only yaws to the right. <laughs> Which if you just want to make right hand turns is great. If you don't just want to make right hand turns, it's bad. Ah, you stupid thruster and it's catty cornered. So again, I'm going to use the flat side of the cargo box to move them around. I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to come back a little bit. Some things can be nested. Some things can't. So you in, in honeycomb, you can actually sink these down a little bit into the honeycomb, but I'm just going to put this right here. And then I'm going to use my arrow, my page down and move that over there. So now if I'm turning this way, this is going to push air that way to move my nose and the le right rear one is going to push air out this way in order to push my back that way so that we get a nice uh, solid turn and no dragging. So it's not going to let me. All right. So again, I could use the um, U key to turn it yellow so that I can get the exact placement. Uh, but it doesn't really matter as long as they're in the right location, unless you're, you're super, uh, anal about getting things exact. In that case, you can hit the Y and we can scroll backwards and forwards. Nope, that's not it. So let's drop it down one, scroll backwards, scroll forwards. Nope. Drop it down one, 
scroll backwards, scroll forwards. Oh, there it is. So, as you see, you can set them up. So now this one is going to push my nose this way towards that direction um, when I turn left. But same thing. Let's hit you to make that on y'all. I need a thruster on this side of the back in order to make sure that I'm getting the correct turn. All right? So now, if you think about um, pitch, um, so this handles yawing. Now we're going to think about pitch and roll. So rolling is important. Say I want to roll to the right. So I want to roll to the right. Um, how do I need my thrust pushing? So you need the thrusters on this side sending air out. Correct. In order to push this side down. You're going to need one on the front and the back. Otherwise, you're just pushing the front left down. And that's going to create some issues. So we're going to put that one there. And we're just going to drop this one up here. Come on. You know you want to. You know you want to. Be a good thruster. All right. Just going to use the arrow keys. There we go. And one over here. There we go. And then again, another one up front here. Done. So now... If I wanted to roll to the right, this one and the one on the top back would push this side of the ship down. However, in order to get a roll and not just lean the ship over, you need two thrusters on this side of the ship pushing air downward. So we're going to set one here. Same thing we did on the other side. Set one there. Let's go to the back. I'm going to set one here. And... I'm going to set one over here. And I'm going to set one right here. Done. So now we have both roll and yaw and pitch handled. Because when you pitch down, the front ones are going to push air out to push the nose down. And the rear bottom ones down here are going to push air out to push the back up, which gives you a decent pitch so now you can see my axis rotations um, you know we have um, almost one um, millinewton of thrust one millinewton of thrust uh, roll left and roll right both have three millinewtons and then pitch up and pitch down I'll have over uh, one millinewton so <clears throat> we're good to go on that. Um, it should also mean that if I get in the ship and I put fuel in it and I lift it off the ground, it should stay stable because the adjusters are all keeping the ship uh, in position. So if I put all adjusters on this side of the ship and then I took off, my ship would start um, rolling to the left because you wouldn't have any counteraction on the right. So adjusters are very important as far as placement let's actually move this one back a little I put it like here same with this one let's move it back further so if you're having stability issues it's more than likely that you put your adjusters in the wrong places um, and you're just not getting the proper uh, counteractions when trying to do your raws uh, bleh, raws yaws and rolls <laughs> Okay, and that is the basics of what you need on a ship. As you make your ships larger, you use the same exact basics, to, but just scale it up. So if you're making a larger ship that needed to haul more cargo, you would need more engines, you would need more wings, you would need more uh, uh, flat hover engines, you would need more brakes, um, prop, maybe more fuel tanks, etc., etc. Uh so something about these flat hover engines. So you saw at the beginning I had vertical stabilizers selected. Uh, the reason for that is that if you land on a planet with no atmosphere, uh, hover engines don't work. 
so you need vertical stabilizers in order to land on them and take off uh, so there is a benefit to using vertical stabilizers however like i said they eat your space fuel um, so if you're hovering on them your space fuel is going down so if you do use them you probably want to put them on a separate tank than the main engine so you don't end up losing uh, thrust and just floating through space okay so you saw i put the the data core here um i don't have a a uh, uh radar hooked up but basically i would run custom auto config and put my uh my my uh bleh, my scripts on there um, then i'm using my lewis script uh du orbital and i will put a link in the description to the du orbital hud um, and then if I get in the ship here, it'll drop down to the ground again. Whoop. And uh, there's the HUD. So how about we grab some fuel? I wonder if I have any in my container. Do I have any fuel in my container? Nope. So another good thing about this org is that all of these fuels are right here on the tarmac for sale. We got uh, Nitron, Warp Fuel, and uh, Kurgon X2. So, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, I can buy that. I'll, I'll have to tell, oh, did he move them over here? Nope. I'll have to tell uh, one of the legates that they messed up permissions on the uh, fuel purchasing. So, can't buy fuel anymore. <laughs> so, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to this ship over here because I have fuel on board. Um, this is my the first ship i designed um she is what we call the beach cruiser she's got some nice wood floors and a nice open cockpit and uh it basically just modular it's just the interior got some fuel cans here uh got the two large cargo containers so i'm gonna link to this cargo container advanced uh declares link container right and we'll go over here I'm just using build mode to get on top here quickly. I'm going to use my refuel tool. Make sure that the fuel is selected. If not, then I would have to go into my inventory, um, right click and select use fuel. All right, so now we have fuel on there. Let's see if she hovers in place. So I'm going to hit insert to go into third person view. Ooh, no, not mouse control. Ah, let's set that back to keyboard. <laughs> okay now i can look around so if i hit the g key on this script to take off for you probably just hold your space bar and now i'm hovering nice and high right we'll give it some thrust there go the engines and i should take off yep so when you're flying if you hit x you go through these trajectory displays um, the if you hit X three time, you have this long range one, which shows you uh, your tra uh, forecasted trajectory, right? So if I decrease my thrust to zero right now, that's where I'll land. Um, and by turning, you can see how fast that line will catch up. So she doesn't turn. Uh, she doesn't catch up all that great. I might want to think about adding more uh, horizontal stabilizers. Uh, or, but usually I just roll into my turns like you would in a fighter jet. And you can see how quickly the line catches up when you do that. 
and you might see the stall warning on the script that's part of the uh, stall warning on the screen that's part of the script as well now we're just going to come back in for landing and there you have it all the basics you need to build a ship out of just parts it may look ridiculous but it works and if you wanted to put some honeycomb on it later you can always do that you can move around the components etc etc put my brakes on um, and you'll see that the hover engines will catch the ship I stopped I don't want to go forward go forward there we go and we're down see the hover engines cut it just fine if I had a bunch of weight in there it might be a little harder for them to catch uh, but usually it's just fine it comes down nice you let the hover engines catch you and then you go to the ground if you're not using the script make sure you're holding spacebar or the hover engines won't engage if you are using the script then all you have to do is hit G and it automatically lands your little ship and hopefully not on top of somebody else's ship okay we'll hit F to get out of the thing um, and now let's talk about uh, packing up real quick so I'm gonna hit the one one key in build mode and I'm just going to grab all these elements by holding the alt key, pick them up, pick them up. If, uh, oh, I won't be able to pick the fuel tank up. So that's a good thing to show you as well. Little things floating around. We'll grab everything we can possibly grab. All right. The adjusters, the stabilizers, the wings. No target found. I'm pointing right at it. Um, if I try to click on the core, you're going to see it say, nope, core cannot be removed in build mode. All right, so now I'm going to go out of build mode, hit 6 to bring up my refueling tool. I'm going to hold Alt and click, and that's going to pull all of the fuel out of the tank back into my inventory. So now if I go back into build mode, I can pull that. So now you just have a core there. You say, how do I pick that core up? Well, the number eight tool, which is deploy ground element. If you hold alt, you see it turns yellow. Click it. It's back in your inventory. All done and good to go. All right, and that's where I'm going to end the video today. If you like what I do, go ahead and drop a like in the video and subscribe for future tutorial videos. I will be continuing this series into other topics um, that people might find interesting. And hopefully at the end, uh, when I've done a, a couple tutorials and I've got some more of this stuff under my belt, I can make like a frequently asked questions video or a um, top 10 tips uh, video that we can just kind of keep nice and concise under like six minutes um, for people who just want to want to watch something on like a, a bunch of tips uh, and things like that um, next video we'll probably be going into some mining um, maybe a little bit of industry uh, maybe a bit of voxel work um, how you can use the voxel tools to make basic shapes without having to have a degree in voxelmancy so i will leave it there and i will see you all out here in space stay safe